So welcome to the second part of um, the lecture on sequences, infinite sequences. Uh, we want to look at the third theorem that we need to prove uh, convergence of uh, a sequence. So this theorem says that if the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a and is zero, then we can conclude that the limit of the sequence itself is going to zero. Okay. So we want to prove this. And then we use that to do um, a simple example. Okay, so how do we prove that? Now, uh, it is important to note this is important for this proof that this sequence here always lies between negative absolute value of a n and then the absolute value of a n. All right, so this is important. Note if you consider just this part, this is true, consider this part. If the times of this sequence are negative, for instance, then of course this guy will be a positive quantity, this will be negative, so the inequality holds. The negative star will always be less than the positive star. Now, assuming that they are um, positive, both positive, then of course this will be positive, and this is positive, and the inequality holds. So this is true. You can show that this part is also true, right? If the um, times of this sequence are positive, all right, then this guy will all be positive because this is positive and we are negating it, this is negative, so the negative star will always be like the positive star. Okay, if both are negative, then of course this is already negative, this is also negative, and then the equality holds. So this is true. So now, right from here, what we do is that you find the limit as n goes to infinity of each term of this inequality. So finding the limits, I have limit as n goes to infinity of negative absolute value of a n less than or equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of a n less than or equal to the limit n goes to infinity of a n. Okay. Now let's find this. Here yeah. now the limit as n goes to infinity of minus absolute value of a n is equal to, remember the laws of sequences that we get down with. I can pull this negative one out here. So this is minus the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a n. But by from the theorem, we are given that this goes to zero. So if this goes to zero, this has to go to zero, the negative still have zero. So this is equal to zero. So, the left hand side of the inequality, this guy is zero. From the theorem, this side is equal to zero. So, this implies that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n okay, lies between zero and zero. So, using the squeeze theorem, theorem two, we can conclude that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n is equal to by the squeeze theorem. Okay. So this says that if I'm given a sequence, if I take the absolute value of, um, if I take the limit of the absolute value of the sequence and it goes to zero, I can conclude that the limit of the sequence itself is going to zero. Now you have to be very careful here. If you take the absolute value, find the limit, and you get a number either than zero, you get a one or two or whatever, it's not zero you cannot conclude this. So you have to be careful about that, okay? All right, now let's, um, let's do an example of this. Yes, so, example. Find, want to find the limits as n goes to infinity of negative 1 raised to the power n all over n if it exists. Okay. So we want to find this. So solution the limit as n goes to infinity. I want to take the absolute value of this guy to get rid of the negatives. This is equal to note that the numerator here is just plus one, negative one, minus one, plus one, okay? This is also between one and negative one. 
So if you take the absolute value of that, you just get uh, one. Okay. So this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n. Okay. If you like, this is like absolute value of minus one to the n absolute value of n. Ns are positive, so you can remove the absolute values. This guy just gives you one because it's negative one, negative one, negative one, one. Okay, so this is just the limit n goes to infinity of one over n. Of course, as n goes to infinity, this is equal to zero. If I use zero of one to prove that this is going to zero, because the limit of the absolute value of this sequence is going to zero, we can use the theorem that we just proved to show that the limit itself without the absolute value times will also go to zero. So therefore, we make as n goes to infinity of negative one to the n over n is equal to zero. Okay? By applying the theorem that uh, we just proved. Good. So that was our third theorem. Let's look at the fourth one. Theorem number four. We have five theorems. So once we do number four, we have just one more uh, to do. Theorem four says this if the limit as n goes to infinity of a n is L and the function f is continuous continuous at L then the limit as n goes to infinity of f of a n is equal to f of um, That is, that is all this theorem says. So it says if I find the limit as n goes to infinity of this sequence, okay, the nth term of the sequence is equal to L, it's converging to this. And if f is continuous at this value, then I can do this. Basically, this is saying that I can do limit n goes to infinity of f of n, f of a n is equal to, in other words, I can take the limit into the argument of the function. So this is f, if you like, limit n goes to infinity of a n. If the function is continuous at this value, by hypothesis, this is l, okay? So f of f, and this holds because this function here is continuous at the point or the number l. So that is what that's what this is. So for example, example, if you want to find the limit, find the limit as n goes to infinity of cosine of pi over n. Okay. And it's cost of this. So you can um, you can define the function if you like, you can write. Um, let's say a n be equals to pi over n and d of f of a n, right, would just be equal to cosine of pi over n, that is like the x is equal to cosine of x, something like that, okay? So first, we find the limit as n goes to infinity of a n, the limit as n goes to infinity pi over n. This of course goes to zero from here on one. This is going to zero. Now uh, because because uh, the cosine function is continuous at zero, we can do this. We can say that the limit as n goes to infinity of cos pi over n is equal to cos of limit n goes to infinity of pi is cosine of zero, right? Which is equal to one. Okay? So that is directly applying this one. Here is this uh, related similar example that applies this theorem. 
I want to find I want to find the limit as n goes to infinity of e raised to the power sine of pi over n. Okay, I want to find it. So this is very similar. You can define a n. You can define your f of a n. But in the nutshell, what you do here is basically doing this using the sine of pi over n. Is equal to b to the limit n goes to infinity sine of pi over n. Now the limit as n goes to infinity of pi over n is zero. The sine function is continuous at zero, so basically you can take this into the argument for the sine function. So this is equal to e to the sine of limit n goes to infinity of pi over n. This is zero. So that is e sine of zero sine zero is zero e to the zero is one. So this is equal to one. So you can apply that theorem to find the limit of this sequence, and that gives you one as well. Okay. So we want to look at um, um, one last thing. Then we move to our final theorem. So I'll just state this. Okay, I'll state it without proving it. Uh, but I want you to keep that in mind. That if so, this is sometimes given as a theorem that you can show show that the sequence. R raised to the power n from 0 to infinity, this guy converges, converges if R applies between this and diverges, and diverges for all other values of R. Okay, you can also show that the limit as n goes to infinity, so you can find the limit of r to the n is 0 or 1 here, and it is 1 if r is equal to 1. So keep this in mind, this is very, very important. We'll come across this over and over again. Uh, even when we start doing series, we come across this. So these days, if I'm, if I'm giving a sequence that looks like this, from zero to infinity, this sequence converges if there's r, right? This r here lies in infinity one to one, and it diverges for all other values. In other words, it diverges if r is greater than one, and diverges if r is less than or equal to negative one. Okay, so that is very important. Let's see that in mind. And if it converges, it's converging to zero for r to infinity. One and on that is one uh, is equal to one. Okay. All right. Now let's go to our final uh, theorem. Final theorem concerning boundedness. So we want to look at bounded monotonic sequences. And then we'll be done with this. So we have bounded 